In this video, we're going to head back into contact and we're going to be focusing on the wave editor and specifically attempting to create as perfect a loop as we possibly can in order to sustain a sound. And in this case, it's like just a waveform from a synthesizer for as long as possible. And you might wonder, well, what's the point in doing this? Like, couldn't I just use the synthesizer itself? Why would I want to resample it and work with it inside of contact? There's a variety of reasons you might want to do this. If you take waveforms from a variety of synthesizers or you want to put um, a synthesizer sound on top of, say, strings or on top of a piano, it makes sense to work all in contact so that you can get like a consistent envelope and you can get something like consistent filters and effects, etc. So this is the waveform that we have. And you might be wondering, well, why aren't you like using unison and stuff? Why don't you take advantage of the instrument? And I could do that. The issue is creating a loop, a very fluid loop is harder that way. And what we can always do inside of contact is duplicate the sample like a million times and then slightly detune it that way. So we can still get a really good sound. This way we can at least get a very consistent loop. So you kind of have to choose one or the other. And in this case, I want to get a perfect loop. Okay, so we have our waveform without any additional voicings, no unison detune. So it's just that. All right, I've gone ahead and I've bounced it. I can now head into contact and I can drag and drop that file in. And in this case, it's been sampled at an A, meaning that if I go in here now and I arm this to record and I hit an A, let's go up an octave. We can hear that it's actually not tracked properly right? It's actually lower than it should be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead into the mapping editor first thing and make that adjustment. Okay. So instead of having this be C3, it's really like, I don't know, it's probably more like A1. All right, so now we're good to go. This is going to uh, work properly. The next thing I need to do is go into the wave editor because as you're hearing, if I play this note, when it gets to the end, it just gets to the end. So we need some sort of a loop if we wanted to do something like create a pad sound. And you can hear the issue with that too because of the um, stretching algorithm that we're using, they're cutting off at different times. Having a loop will help us solve that problem, although we also will probably need to inevitably go in and change the uh, repitching algorithm that's being used. But first things first, let's go ahead and try to get a loop out of this guy. To add a loop, all I have to do is click this one button here and we have our loop like so. So if we listen back to it right now, and you never know, sometimes this ends up working perfectly. In this case, it's not. You can hear a click. And that click is what I need to try to get rid of so that it can just go through fluidly. So I can always try to begin by snapping to zero crossings. But very rarely do I have any success with that. So I'm going to actually turn that off. And instead, I'm just going to do this manually. So I'm going to zoom in here. And I'm going to look manually for the zero crossing places. And the zero crossing is just literally when this waveform comes across zero. So we have one like right about here. And this shape should just be repeating over and over again. It's a little bit more complex than just your standard like saw wave. But still, if I can get in there. And in this case, I might turn on the snap to zero crossing and just see if I can get it there and then i need to go to the other side i need to kind of find this same pattern so we see like three sawtooth waves almost at the top and then it starts turning into almost more of a square wave so if i can find that on the other side right here in theory this should now work oh we're in business And 
so even playing like multiple notes at the same time seems to now like help. We're not getting any clicks. It's not noticeable that the sounds are cutting off or at a different time. So we're pretty much good to go. And I could go back now into like my instrument options. Whoop, sorry about that. Wrong thing. Just go back to my main instrument panel. And I could go and I could look at the modulator for this guy, head down to the ADSR. We could create now more of like a pad sound if we wanted to. to add a filter we could of course do that and let's just go and put an LFO on this guy and let's go with a whole note here so it's going a little bit too far so we need to go back to down so right now it's re-triggering with every new note I don't necessarily want that so I'm going to turn that off I'm going to speed it up even more So let's actually go in here and change this to be a half note. And we can also add some fade to this too, so that it's not going to be as noticeable at the beginning. So just as a little bit of a bonus for you guys, I went ahead and just added a couple of different effects so that you could hear how you can take something like that single sample waveform and then really transform it um, into whatever you wanna use it for. So in this case, we have more of like a pad. But we could have just as easily created a bass sound or a lead sound or whatever. But this is the method that you use to get the sample in there. Effects processing, you know, that's something we've covered in the earlier courses and something that we'll cover in later courses when we do more sound design specific stuff. But anyway, we're good to go. That's working with the wave editor, creating that perfect loop so that you can create, you know, basically a subtractive synthesizer using samples.